Hey guys, uh, Chris here from Koi Talk and uh, here with Ricky, Koi Wholesale. Hey guys. Um, conversation come up yesterday when we were netting some fish about differing styles of Sankey, how maybe some fish are overlooked a little bit because of the style of the Sumi. Yeah, Obviously, completely. Typically Sankey are quite a delicate, delicately placed uh, Sumi pattern on the fish. But in recent years, maybe not even so in recent years, there's certainly been uh, more of a development on the Sumi side when it comes to mm. Sankey Rick. And we've got five examples in the bowl here which really demonstrate the different styles of Sankey. Obviously, traditionally, uh, yeah, a Kahaku place pattern with nice, delicate yep. placed Sumi, ideally on the white skin. Obviously, influences from years gone by, Jim Bay, Sadazo, Matsunovsky, Sankey line. Mm -hmm. Is Sankey evolving? Uh, they're an interesting one. Mm. I, I know most people, hobbyists or dealers I, I bump into, always say, I, I don't understand Sankey. Mm. I, I hear it time and time and time again. And for me, yeah, they're probably the most elegant of the three Go Sankey, but yeah. probably the hardest to, to really get right as well. And the style, the style is a big, a big part of, I think people's preference, whether they like them, don't like them. Maybe they've not seen the style of Sankey particularly that they like, but yeah, they're, they're, they're quite complex, uh, but I, I absolutely love them. But again, even for me, there's personal taste between breeders that I like yeah, and sure. the, the styles that I, I prefer as well. Well, I think uh, years ago, I think uh, one of the breeders said to me that, you know, there's not a bit like a Kahaku, there's not, a lot for anything to hide on the Sankey. No. So when it comes to placement, uh, we're, we're mostly focusing on a pattern aspect on today's video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the heavier style Sumi, you know, it's almost discounted immediately, you know, and obviously the style, the body style that Sankey tend to grow, getting this, this, this length on the fish. Yeah. Do you think a lot of fish are sort of turned away because they're not so traditional? Uh, they're not given the time you know yeah take a look i think at i think a big a big thing ball. with sankey for a start is is time yeah there's the sumi plays a huge part uh and young sankey what you tend to get in a lot depending on the line is again it, this is where it's going you know, to obviously get technical uh but you can get in particular lineages just a lot of baby sumi so that can be where you're looking at a toe side that could have quite a lot of sumi sat on it you're possibly looking at it thinking that's going to be too heavy uh or it's just not going to be the you know kind of fish you expect when it gets bigger you grow it for, for six or eight months in a mud pond it sticks on 20 centimeters and all of a sudden it gets harvested and there's no sumi and that throws everybody yeah but what that's doing is it's just this baby sumi that comes up early disappearing off sitting going down deeper in the skin and then eventually it comes up you know then two year three year four years old slowly coming back up generally of a, of a higher quality and consistency as well so not that that's particularly happened, but that's more of uh, the traditional sort of style of Sankey, like uh, like these two really. Mm. And, and that one, that's probably sitting somewhere in between. If we focus on these two, you know, certainly this one here, that typical Sankey, I can't remember these when they came in, bearing in mind I've raised these this summer. Uh, they arrived with me back in April, uh, I think they were about 13 to 15 cm overall. So there has been pretty huge growth realistically. Uh, but yeah, this this is that typical. Again, I can't remember if they were sat heavier, but I probably probably expect there possibly was a bit more sumi showing when these were bigger. It starts growing. It just sits down a little bit in the body, uh, and then as it's as we see it now, this is actually the the reemergence of some of this because they've, we've been conditioning them uh, just of late. So this is actually the, the sumi reemerging and coming back through to its its sort of final final quality on that one. It's quite an easy fish to read to mm. be honest with you you can see the sumi there it's just a matter of time and, and waiting to get that up to its best with that one i think this is the very sort of traditional i think this is a style of sankey that a lot of people tend yes. to actually yeah, like yeah. really sort of clean cut you've got the nice kwaku pattern uh the sumi is sort of there for all to see but again this there's, there's emergencies on this that weren't happening you know this sumi is showing just behind the heads a very recent occurrence uh, and yeah, what's generally happening with that? It's a really clean fish, nice subo sumi where it sits on the white ground uh, on, across the majority of the fish. Great piece, easy to read, and I think that's the style that people really understand. There's a big sakai influence in that as well. You know, the sakai sankey tends to, as you've seen, 
create that sort of style a lot more of those two fish when we look at these two however this is where i think people really get thrown you know i think you know there's possibly people who are just starting out in the hobby not been at it too long struggling to see whether that's sankey or shower uh to be honest with you and same with that one so kind of um we spoke about it previously about you know the emergence of kindai shower yeah it, you know sankey are, are fairly they conform to type don't they you know they very much step pattern sumi placement yeah and yeah they don't have the quirkiness that perhaps other varieties do but it, it, you know from a, a technical perspective obviously the fish that you pointed out to begin with are probably more reflective of a, a show status kind of fish that's it i think i think it's the image of sankey people holding their heads yeah but obviously a fish like this i mean i hope it comes across in the camera but it's the, the pigment it's quality fierce. is absolutely phenomenal i think the thing with this this style of sumi is this is quite it's difficult to understand because it mm. varies so much a lot of older matsunoski sankey very traditional ones would carry that kind of style of sumi a lot more uh the the jimbei line as you mentioned at the start of the video i mean that was a fascinating one incredibly temperamental sumi but it was it was renowned for these big building blocks of sumi mm. big big yeah. heavy intense blocks uh, a lot of confusion between you know sankey or shore on them ones for a lot of people and uh, but that lineage was temperamental you know a lot of breeders tried to use it because the quality of the sumi was so good but actually when it came to mixing that jimbei lineage with others nine times out of ten there weren't very many successful results in terms so, of getting the refinement in the sumi. yeah it just it just mm. sent it sent good lineages to pot when they tried crossing it in so uh yeah I, I, you saw uh, i think the complicated thing with it is depending on the lineage it can be a good and a bad thing and size size plays a huge part mm. with this style of sumi now this fish i've actually got uh, a picture of this when it arrived so we can overlay that might actually if i look back i've have them of all these this one in particular uh, i've got now a sort of 15 centimeter toe side that it was and i think everybody's looking at that fish going it's going to be too heavy yeah the sumi is going to dominate but with this particular lineage at taniguchi in particular it seems to be the case that this this style of sumi and it's exactly what's happened with this it just holds it's there it doesn't change too much it's pretty much up quite early as with that fish but it it holds and then the rest of the fish grows around it if mm. you like and sort of pulls everything into place and actually scales the sumi down a little bit because as, the, as everything else on the fish gets bigger the sumi becomes then more proportionate to the rest yes. of the body yeah yeah so that's why with with that fish in particular i mean this is it's the most exciting one for me but its size is going to be its friend no two ways about it. if this fish doesn't get size it's not going to reach the visual potential sure. uh, real potential that it that it can get it's capable of getting the size and it needs it to hold that pattern this other one not quite the same as as this fish we've just been discussing but along similar lines obviously this huge heavy sumi mm. you know but the rest of the fish you know areas of this are going to be really proportionate not not the big blocks that's more show like like that this is actually going to have a lot quite a lot of sankey finesse as it gets bigger obviously the big the big bit there behind the shoulders is dominant but these other elements of the sankey coming through are going to be pretty much in line with where you'd see a sankey but again i think you're possibly looking at that now as it is and thinking that's going to be too much it's going to be too heavy again the size element kicks in and it changes the game so it's why fish like that just simply can't be overlooked mm. providing they're from the, the right lineage it's where it gets confusing because there will be bloodlines that produce that sumi that you'll want to run a mile from because it will just dominate the fish at any size and and there'll be no finesse to it i think uh you hit the nail on the head yesterday when you said uh they're the type of fish that perhaps a lot of people won't get yeah uh is that a positive or a negative view from your position in terms of obviously we're in a position where we can educate and inform yeah, people yeah, yeah. but obviously I, I, I from think, a sales perspective or an appreciation perspective yeah for me um, for, for how i operate here frankly i don't care because i'll keep raising them until until it comes to the point where 
people do get people it. look and go oh, now i get it yeah sure the issue the issue with that is when when you don't get it or you're not prepared to you know take a punt see how it goes that's ultimately what i've done over the years with these is is, is i've learned by taking them punch chances seeing what happens that's mm. what's allowed me to you know have a, a big batch of 15 centimeter tail side from Taniguchi and raise this this level of fish it, it's taking those chances and, and learning from it but uh yeah i think the issue is when that fish let's let's call it i get that to 70 centimeters and all of a sudden it looks like the vision i've got in my head yeah all of a sudden there's not many people buying it yeah that's going to be a, an expensive and fish the price point changes at that yeah. point completely whereas i mean if you go right back to someone else taking that punt on a fish like that as a tow side they'd have picked up an absolute bargain yeah sure right now mm. uh even right now, to be honest, I'm not particularly looking to sell it right now, but if I did, obviously the price now is still going to be very different to what it would be potentially be in, in yeah. two years. So I think, you know, that's an issue across a lot of varieties, mm. full stop. Uh, it's appreciating, but I think people just don't understand what that Sumi does. And yet you're right, the knowledge isn't just out there and readily available. So, you know, hopefully we can, we can do a bit to, to enlighten people a bit more to take advantage of finding small fish like that that are out there yeah so from um there'll probably be a lot of people watching this at home thinking you know it's classic pick the best one out of the bowl yeah it means different things at different times obviously yeah, yeah, are yeah, we yeah, picking completely. for now are we yeah. picking for the future yeah um let's just say i think you might have answered it already but let's just say if we're looking for a, a, a potential show fish moving forward that has the I don't think, I think we're probably both in agreement none of these fish are finished yep so if we're looking for something in the future yep which one uh, i think you're potentially looking along the lines of these two obviously we've not discussed this fish yet but i think again it depends where you are you know where they're being judged as well i suppose because tastes will differ slightly yep. but you know from a technicality standpoint i think that's very desirable this this one's still got a lot to do it's it's quite a raw fish you know there's a lot i've noticed we've got some it's got the big sort of heavy block of sumi in that peck fin again which can be confusing because it looks like motogoro which it's not we've now got sumi starting in this peck fin which is quite interesting but if we look at the body of that fish i mean it is yes, it is the body yeah. champion in the bowl it's, mm. it's a powerhouse and the skin quality seems to have elevated to another level yeah the shiroji on the fish well. is significant yeah. but there's still so much to do uh you know size wise it is going to dominate uh, in, in that respect so i think yeah you're possibly looking along them lines but again this one shouldn't be discarded because the, the vision in my head of that fish by the time it does reach a considerable size it's just going to look look phenomenal no two ways about it so i think when we come back to this fish guys obviously what you'll notice is the as the fish gets bigger the body is going to essentially do this so the the white areas on the fish are going to become a little bit more prominent that adds to that balance i guess exactly. rick yeah um so for those of you that again i think it's probably going to be fairly across the board rick that people aren't don't really get this type of fish no, and I think there's other little things as well. Obviously, you can see Sumi sort of oh, around the head yep. region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's absolutely fine with Sankey. I, uh, you know, I, I don't know where that came from. I think it's beyond before my time, but uh, in modern day Sankey, it's quite normal. Mm. Like to have the big heavy Sumi in the fin. Again, we've seen it time and time again, to be honest with you. It's, it's all perfectly acceptable. Again, what ultimately we're coming down to is looking at the overriding quality of the fish and not and not the silly little things that I'd say, you know, yeah, draw, to get draw people yeah. in, you know. It's like that one, you could quite easily look at it and go, it's got two red eyes. Who gives a monkeys? Just look at the fish. And know, obviously, I'm, I'm seeing everything else before two red eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it does, in fairness, Rick, that does take time. It does. Um, um, I'm completely with you. It's, you basically have to learn yourself to, yeah, to, yeah. to look uh, at fish in a completely different way. And obviously, from a relative perspective, you know, don't get me wrong; these aren't cheap fish, no. but these aren't sort of uh, no, no, they're not crazy ridiculously not crazy priced fish no. for the quality. No, great pieces. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so just going, we're not really spoke about this one, but I think this has got really the balance of everything coming towards it absolutely phenomenal skin quality this is uh probably what people are a little bit more yeah yeah that's it really of. balanced benny we've got sumi yep. forming you know some nice areas of subo sumi in there as well and it's just it's just a superb piece 
body lines exceptional you really look even you know they're all got good bodies different bodies as well to be honest with you you look at that one it carries itself so well you can see it's going to be the the size champion out of the bunch yeah yeah of course and it, it carries carries the pattern it does well. really well and again size is gonna is gonna change it's gonna that work as with well. it yeah. yeah for sure you're gonna have this intricacy when the fish again the body increases yeah Obviously, a refinement on the Benny pattern. Sashi is going to tidy up. There's yeah. no real concerns there. No. Um, so, yeah. Great fish. And Great in fish. terms of, uh, we mentioned these fish all from Taniguchi. Yes. I mean, we both, you know, <laughs> how many times have we uh, drawled Top. over yeah, Taniguchi I know. fish? I, know. I mean, Fascinating it's, place. it's uh, a little gem. Uh, uh, quality seems to be the overriding. He is. I mean, for me, for me, it's obviously set out in Hiroshima. Uh, I'm not sure that I think there's a good level of awareness of, of Taniguchi over here in the UK now. Mm. I mean, his fish have been around for a long time, but for me, since I've known the guy, his his skill at selecting parent fish has always blown me away. His knowledge of bloodlines, yeah. you know, and that that is what you really see come come through in the offspring. That knowledge and, and the level of investment it puts into the parent fish as well. Sure, you'll often see him down at Sakai auctions. You know, with his hand up on some pretty serious fish. So he's not playing around. No, no, no. He's, he's got some great. And we, we, you know, nine times out of ten, we're talking big fish as well. Sure. You know, from the golden corn lineage, you're talking. You know, all fishes of, of considerable size and sankeys. You know, crouching, getting on for the meter mark. A lot of Sakai blood in there. There is a big influence of Sakai in his lineage, which I like to be honest with you, as sort of dictated the style a bit but it's it's not everything and uh yeah i just think he's a class class farmer for yeah. sankey right up there in my sort of top top five of where i'd, I'd want to buy him from mm. for sure yeah incredible well yeah hopefully uh everyone's learned a little bit fingers crossed in this in this video i mean yeah. it's uh if not, we've enjoyed looking at five. Yeah, and Absolute feel free to obviously fish. pop any questions uh, down below. Yeah, uh, if there's anything you're curious of, you know, we can try and produce some more content or just get back to you directly. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Cheers, Rick. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Take care.